My brother is obsessed with lights. He always has been. I think he must have been a moth in a previous life. And he's in the process of redecorating his living room at the moment. He wants to do something wacky with LED lights around his coving. And also he wants to fit a picture rail. So that's what I'm going to help him with today. I brought along all the tools and materials that I thought we would need to do the job. Plus some pieces of 18mm MDF that I'd ripped down on the table saw back in the workshop. I'll explain what those are for later. My brother had already stripped all the old coving off and we're going to start by adding the picture rail which my brother wanted to be in line with the top of the door architrave. Unfortunately the tripod wouldn't allow me to get my laser level high enough but the laser level has a magnet on the back. Where the hell did you pull that tip from? These are the MDF picture rail mouldings. I'll go through the costs and where we got all of the materials later in the video. The first piece can just be cut to fit and I brought my mitre saw along for this job. Hello. We're using an instant grab adhesive and I like to push it on, pull it off and then push it on again as a bit of air seems to help activate the glue. And with that in place I set the laser level to the bottom of the rail just because it's easier to see when lining up the rest of the pieces. I can then butt up the next piece so that it's sitting level and scribe the shape of the moulding onto the end and I get it cut out with the coping saw. Then I need to cut an external mitre. This is the only external mitre in the whole room. The rest are all internal. To complete the external mitre, the mating piece gets a bit of mitre adhesive, which is a CA glue, and it comes with an activator spray to set it really quickly. For the longer lengths, I knocked in some pins just to make sure that it doesn't sag before the glue sets. I left these protruding so that they can be easily removed and holes filled later. The only other obstacle we had to work around are these two heating pipes which we'd unclipped from the wall so I'm marking up the location of these and a round file would have been ideal for this job but we didn't have one so I ended up nibbling away at it with the jigsaw which left a rough finish but once sanded and painted it'll be fine. And I'm going to add a mitered return detail to finish the end of the rail. <laughs> on the longest wall we needed to join some lengths together and we did that with a mating 45 degree cut just because it looks cleaner than a 90 degree butt joint would. It was a pretty quick job and after a quick spot of lunch we could start thinking about the lighting and coving. With my compass set to 90 millimeters, I scribed a line all the way around the room onto the ceiling and that's because the coving we'll be using measures 90 millimeters in depth and width. Initially my brother had accidentally bought the wrong size coving because he didn't realize that the measurements given on the website are diagonal from corner to corner so we had to return the stuff listed as 100 millimeter coving and get the larger 127 millimeter instead and the stuff that we are using is polystyrene which is really lightweight making it easier to glue in place. Once all the 90mm guidelines had been scribed I can start using the 18mm MDF strips. I'm going to glue these in place to the ceiling so that the front edge of the MDF meets that 90mm line. I used a few 18 gauge brad nails just to help hold it in place until the glue cures. And this MDF is going to do two things. Firstly it's going to give us something to secure this stuff to. This is aluminium C channel which comes with a diffuser that fits onto the front. And I'll leave links to this stuff in the description box below. This measures 18mm wide so the same thickness as the 18mm MDF that it's going to be fixed to. We just need a couple of pilot holes through the back of the aluminium channel so that we can screw it in place. Sorry. <laughs> and with the channels fitted my brother started adding the LED lighting which has a self adhesive backing. So what are these LEDs called? Cob. COB. Yeah. And what's special about them?
They're pretty. They're pretty. <laughs> There's no dot. So it's kind of like a seamless light. Yeah. I'm using a decorator's caulk just to fill any small gaps between the aluminium channel and ceiling, which will help make it all look seamless. Then the diffuser can be fitted to hide the LEDs and help disperse the light evenly. The second reason for those MDF strips is that it'll give us more gluing surface to secure the coving to. This is the first piece going in, and here is Keith back at home to explain how we cut it. Cutting coving isn't as easy as you might think. We made a few mistakes. There were occasions where we ended up cutting external corners rather than internal, for example. We used the mitre saw to cut the coving, and the first thing I did was to mark up 90 millimeters onto both the fence and the bed of the saw. So if we pretend this curved piece of card is a piece of coving, that enables me to line up the coving with those marks before making a cut. If the coving is not lined up with those marks and you angle the saw to 45 degrees, your cut is going to be skewed slightly and you'll end up with nasty gaps to fill when it comes to fitting the coving. Not that that's a huge problem though, because this is one of those jobs where perfection really isn't necessary. By the time you fill or caulk any gaps and paint it all in, no one is ever going to know, providing you do it neatly, of course. Anyway, here's the method that we figured out. To cut an internal mitre for this piece on the left in the diagram, you're going to want to flip the coving upside down. And by the way, all of the cuts that we're going to be making for both internal and external mitres will have the coving placed on the bed of the saw so that the arc is bending in towards the fence, as you can see here. Place it to the right of the blade, pivot 45 degrees to the right, make the cut, and then when you flip it back over, it'll be perfect. Now for the piece on the right, flip the coving upside down again, place it to the left of the blade and pivot 45 degrees to the left. For external mitres, for the piece on the left, place it upside down and to the right of the blade, pivot to the left and make the cut. And for the piece on the right, work piece upside down again, to the left of the blade, pivot to the right. I couldn't find anything online to explain this in a way that I thought was easy to understand, so hopefully you'll find this useful next time you need to cut some coving on the mitre saw. Other good options include the mitre guide blocks or cutting jigs that allow you to cut the coving with a handsaw, but we didn't have either of those to hand. My best advice would be to buy a bit more than you think you might need and don't give yourself a hard time if you don't get it right first time. Those pesky pipes needed some cutouts in the coving too. And once all the coving was fitted, more caulking to fill the gaps. I also did the gap between the aluminium channel and the coving, and then wiped away any excess with a damp cloth. So here's how I left things that evening, and a few days later, this is how it looked once all decorated. They went for a pretty bold colour scheme. Yes, that's satin black but the room has loads of natural light and I think it ended up looking nice. The picture rail and adhesive came to £78, the coving, adhesive and decorators cult came to about £38 and the LED lighting and aluminium trunking came to £137. So in total around £253, which is 307 US dollars. <laughs>